Today we're going to consider the time period in China's history running from 220 through almost 589 CE. Though one dynasty, the Western Jin, would reunify China for a brief period during this time frame, the overwhelming amount of time saw a divided China starting with the Three Kingdoms period starting in 220 CE. Only the first of these three kingdoms formally starts in this year, the Wei Kingdom of the North, where Cao Pi, the son of Cao Cao, had followed upon his father's death and promptly forced the abdication of the last Eastern Han Emperor, Emperor Xi'an, who had only ever ruled in name only under the thumb of Cao Cao. During this Three Kingdoms period, there is a growth and interest in Buddhist and Taoist texts, and this growing interest would only accelerate in the time following the rise of the Western Jin and beyond. Ironically, Taoism would now see adaptations which concerned themselves intimately with the 10,000 things. These included a model of heavenly governance that was mirrored by the one on earth, obsessions with immortality, and the coagulation into something far more like a religion, this last of which itself arose to no small extent in response to an intention against the growing popularity of Buddhism. The second of the three kingdoms arrived with Lu Bei, announcing himself emperor of Shu in the southwest, and then to Shu's east, Sun Quan announced himself emperor of Wu in 229 CE. In the north, Wei governance to some extent reflected a legalist mindset, but the Cao lineage was short for actual rule. Cao Pi died in 226 CE, and Cao rulers would now formally hold the throne until 265 CE, while the powerful Sima clan held actual rule. Shortly before the end of this largely facile Cao dynasty, in 263 CE, Sima Yan led the Wei forces in the conquest of the smallest of the three kingdoms, Shu. 265 CE saw Sima Yan formally end the Cao charade and found the Western Jin dynasty running from 265 to 316 CE, and Western for their capital in Luyang, west of their coming capital at modern-day Nanjing. Fifteen years into the Western Jin, China was unified once more with the Jin conquest of Wu. Unification didn't last long, however. Starting in 291 and continuing on and off until 305 CE, civil wars raged. Early on, battle was mostly constrained to around Luyang, but with time it extended beyond. 304 CE saw new problems emerge as five nomad peoples invaded northern China. Nomad forces sacked Luyang in 311 and Chang'an in 316. North China would now see rule under many short-lived kingdoms in the era of the 16 kingdoms, which runs from 304 to 420 CE, while in the south, the Jin ruled for some time, based out of modern-day Nanjing, running from 316 to 420 CE. Just as with the early and later Zhou, the early and later Han, and now the early and later Jin, the later years of the Jin saw rule based out of the east, and they entered the eastern Jin. During the era of the Sixteen Kingdoms, there was much chaos in the north from which many fled. Much migration to the south occurred as nomads and Han Chinese contended in the north. Agricultural production would grow significantly in the south over the ensuing centuries. The northern and southern dynasties then close out our pre-Sui exploration. For the north, the Shanbei nomad-ruled northern Wei kingdom arose, unifying much of northern China by 439 CE, and they brought long-term stability before falling apart and disunity re-arose. The dynasties in the south, meanwhile, were less powerful, ruling out of Nanjing, but having many powerful aristocratic families beyond their control. These aristocrats respected the emperor little, and further, their important vessels and conduits of China's monumental cultural legacy. The Shan Bei, who ruled the Northern Wei, underwent cynicization to an extent. Emperor Shao Wen, a particularly pro-Chinese culture emperor, ruled from 471 to 499 CE. He promoted Shan Bei intermarriage and changing of surnames and beyond, and his reign further oversaw mass land redistribution. The sinicization of the mixed Shanbei Han elite angered many ethnic Shanbei forces, and civil war broke out in 524 CE. 
The northern way fell apart, and by 534, Gao Huan took control of the east, and Yuan Tai took control of the west. These dynasties are called the Eastern Way, years 534 to 550, and Western Way, years 535 to 557, respectively. Gao Huan placed the puppet emperor, Emperor Shao Jing, on the throne of the Eastern Way. In 550, Gao Huan's son, Gao Yang, forced the abdication of Emperor Shao Jing and thus begins the Northern Qi Dynasty, running from 550 to 577 CE. Yuan Tai, meanwhile, killed Emperor Shao Wu in 535 and then followed Emperor Wen, but Yuan Tai held most of the power. Emperor Gong was then forced to abdicate the throne for Yuan Zhu, which began the Northern Zhou Dynasty, running from 557 to 581 CE. In the south, the Eastern Jin Dynasty began under the former prince Sima Rui, who'd led his army south after nomads had killed the former Emperor Min. Sima relied on the support of powerful families for his rule, and though attempts were made to curb their power, this dynamic of being unable to properly rule these powerful families remained for the Eastern Jin and then the ensuing southern dynasties, the Song, Qi, Liang, and Chen, the last of which ran from 557 to 589 CE. The dynasty that would lead China out of disunity is the Sui. The Northern Zhou had already conquered the Northern Qi a couple of years earlier in 577 when general and regent Yang Jian took the reins of rule and established the Sui dynasty in 581 CE. The Sui would unify China in 589 CE and serve, like the Qin did to the Han, as a short-lived unifying dynasty before a grander, longer-living one. Here it's the Sui and then the Tang, both of whom I hope to meet next time we meet China.